Good day, and uh, thanks for tuning in again. I want to apologize to the, my subscribers and a lot of the other people that were looking forward to uh, finding a resolution to this uh, camshaft crisis and the saga going on. I say, unfortunately, the 440 I'm dealing with here, or I'm building, is not a first priority with me. I have uh, customer engine builds that uh, rank ahead of this. This build is, uh, is a personal build that I want to do to sell. Uh, so the customers come first. I've ordered all the parts and pieces uh, to do it, and unfortunately it's, in the, it's amongst other parts and pieces that are on back order right now. So I'm just waiting for the order, this back orders to uh, be completed, and hopefully I'll have the pieces shortly and the lifter shortly to complete this engine. And we'll go from there and uh, hopefully <laughs> sort this thing out. There's a couple of items I'd like to discuss today. Based on a lot of the uh, comments and feedback I got uh, from the previous videos. Uh, there's a number of uh, builders that seem to be that are professional, a lot of hardcore hobbyists, and sounds like one-time engine builders that have been going through the same problems and experienced the same camshaft wipeout that I have. And some of the other comments are just sublime. I, I don't know what planet some of these people are on. I, I really don't. But anyways, uh, neither, that's neither here nor there. What I wanted to talk about today is a uh, uh, majority of the people are saying just bite the bullet and go roller. Hydraulic roller. Uh, but there's one thing that's never talked about with hydraulic rollers. And that's the weight of the components. So, I mean, for stock applications and stock builds, I mean, there's, there's a lot of argument why you'd want to run hydraulic roller. But for high performance engine building... There is a question mark with going with hydraulic roller. And we'll get to that right now. Basically, when you're building an engine, right, and you're choosing valve springs, it's based on overcoming the inertia of the components you're using. And now most of, a lot of people just think you're just overcoming the weight of the valve. Well, that's only part of it. You have to overcome the weight and the inertia of the rocker arm. So aluminums are lighter. Stainless steel are heavier, right? Then you have to overcome the inertia and the weight of the push rod and overcome the weight and the inertia of the lifter. Now, if you look at, I don't particularly have any uh, hydraulic roller lifters with me right now. I used all mine up. But uh, I've got the other stuff here, and I, I contact, I went to the comp website, and I went to a couple of other websites, and it's for the small block Chrysler, a typical hydraulic roller lifter weighs 141 grams. Well, if you look at the weight of the other components, and we'll start off with an old solid roller. Now, this one's from a big block Chrysler from way back in the day. This is an old ice key. Uh, and this was damaged. that had pushrod seat damage. You can see the loft happen, and the pushrod smeared the uh, pocket. And so this was pulled from use. And this was in a very, this was in an old super stock engine and with a very aggressive camshaft. Full roller, 750 lift, 286 duration, old cam dynamic using. It was the maximum that NHRA rules allowed for lift. Anyways, when this was damaged, I just want to show you some of this though. So this is the wheel and bearing assembly, roller wheel and bearing assembly that's in this damaged lifter. Now this goes way, this manufacturer goes way back, I think, right to the 70s. I've had this stuff for a long, long time. But even with that thing being pounded out in the pushrod loft happening in the valve pocket, the pushrod pocket, there's no damage to the axle. There's not a mark on it. And then the springs used with these, these were the carpenters, the triple, the Chrysler triples, or the battleship springs. So these were all match components. And I think the, if I have a spec sheet, I think the, 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 the deflection rate for the spring is damn near 500 PSI. So this is a really stiff valve spring. And the needle bearings on this guy, too, there's not a mark on them. The needle bearings are like new. Now, I bet you couldn't say that for any of the stuff being manufactured today. In fact, I know you couldn't say anything about the stuff being manufactured today because these bearings now... And a lot of the roller lifters that are out there, the hydraulic roller lifters manufactured today, are being pounded out. And the wheels, the roller wheels themselves, are delaminating. So the material is flaking off. So there's a metallurgical problem going on with some of these roller uh, lifter wheels, and for certain with the bearings. 
But we're not going to get into that today. That's a, that's a topic for another day. What I wanted to talk about was weight. So if I scale this, I got a scale here, and I'll put the <coughs> I'll put my standard on. It's a 200 gram standard, and the scale's pretty accurate. It's a hundred, a couple hundreds, of nine hundredths of a gram off. So pretty accurate. So we'll put this on the scale. See what we get. Eighty two point six grams. Solid roller tap it. This is a big block Chrysler. HT nine seventy six. Put that on the scale. Just a little shy of a hundred and eight grams. Put an HT twenty eleven on there, which is a small block version, AMC version. The difference between the two is that they don't have an oiling hole, right? Big block risers don't oil through the push rods, neither do the old LA small blocks. But they accommodated them with the H, the uh, HT 2011s and the 2011Rs, which this one is, because some of the AMCs oil through the push rods and the later Magnums oil through the push rods, but that's a different story. A little over 108 grams. So when you're using <clears throat> the roller, the hydraulic roller tappets, you need a much stiffer valve spring. So you're going to use a much stiffer push rod. Now this is a comp 7955 80 wall, uh, 80 wall, 80 thou thickness for the wall. A little over 52 grams. This is a stock small block, same length, 7.45 inches or whatever. Thin wall casting for an adjustable valve train. Comes in 44.7 grams. So let's do the math. Add it up. Oh, before I get to do that, these are the lightweight crowers. So I've got some lightweight crower solids. Brand new in the box. Let's weigh these guys. 82.8. Similar to the... Uh, solid roller. Anyway, let's do the math. So basically, you've got a hydraulic roller that requires, the lifter is 141 grams, an 80 thou push rod is 52 grams, it gives you a total, just for, the, just for the lifter and push rod, of 193 grams. We're not even, we're not getting into the rocker arms and what the material of the rocker arms are and what the weight of the valve is. We're not even getting, that's complicated mathematics, figuring out the inertia of, of the rocker arm because they're on a fulcrum. So we're not even going to go there. And it's the same regardless. The rocker arms don't change. Stock, weight, lifter 108 grams, push rod 45. So we're, I got 153 grams for a stock flat tappet. If we go to the lightweight, lifter tap, tap it is 83 grams. Even with a thick wall push rod at 52 grams, we're still at 135 grams. So if you look, do the math, man, you're 26% you're heavier for a hydraulic roller and 38% heavier versus a lightweight flat tappet. And you say you want to wind these engines up high, especially you small block Chevy guys. You guys like to wind these engines up. And a lot of them need to be wound up to get into the horsepower range. Well, there's a, something called physics that some people have seem to have forgot. And this is it. The reciprocating weight is multiplied by the square of engine RPM. And here's a graph. So for every 1,000 RPM you increase, the weight's multiplied. So by the time you get up to six or seven grand, man, this stuff weighs a ton as far as what the valve spring has to control. But no one ever talks about this. So you're ahead of the game using a flat tappet for high winding engines or a solid uh, roller lifter. You're not ahead of the game using a hydraulic roller lifter. It's too damn heavy. 
I'm talking about for high performance engines, not, not stock stuff. But no one seems to want to talk about this. Never mind, the, they all talk about the cost. They don't talk about all the rest of this. Well, it's a serious issue, man. Especially if you want to really go, you know, really want to wind these engines up. And you say, well, we just run stiffer valve springs. Well, there's a price to pay for stiffer valve springs, too. It's called pounding out the valve seat. And if it's a material problem, I mean, the materials in the valve seat now are, are <laughs> they're questionable. Isn't that the difference between the E Street head from Edelbrock versus the RPM head? Was the valve seat material? Don't go over a certain lift because the seats can't handle it. There's a trade-off for everything. And this is one of the trade-offs that's never talked about. So that's all I just wanted to bring this up. Now, the be-all, end-all solution is not always going to the latest technology because it's not necessarily beneficial to the end game. And if you're making a high-winding, high-performance engine, stick with a solid. Don't go hydraulic roller. But you're into maintenance. You got to set the lash, which is not fun and games for a lot of people. They just want to, you know, they just want to get in, turn the key, and go. So, anyways, it's just food for thought because I just, you know, no one ever talked about this. It's always well, yeah, hydraulic rollers. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention too: not everybody lives in small block Chevy world. There's a lot of guys out there like me that build Mopars. They build Oldsmobiles and Pontiacs and Buicks. And they build Fords, and they'll be the odd AMC. And there sure as hell isn't a selection of camshafts in the roller grinds that there is for the small block Chevys. So this thing, well, just spend five or six hundred dollars and bite the bullet. Well, five hundred dollars doesn't buy me a set of lifters for a Mopar. Never mind a whole, you know, valve train uh, or you know, camshaft and 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 tappet assembly. So this is just nonsense. You know, bite the bullet. The cheapest camshaft I can get is from Lunati, cam and lifter kit in a roller, and that's 800 and some odd dollars, U.S. So, the Buick and the Oldsmobile and the other GM guys, I mean, they pay even way more than I do as a Mopar enthusiast. So unless you all want to just drive small block Chevys in the future, you know, like, what's the answer to this? Anyways, it's just something I wanted to discuss because no one ever seems to talk about it. It's like they forgot their physics lessons, too, you know. Well, I haven't. And so, like I say, you know, this is not necessarily always the answer to everything. Just, you know, bite the bullet and buy, a, you know, a, a, a roller. Not if I'm going to wind up a small block Mopar, I'm not. Anyways, thanks for your time. Bye now.